popped out into the garden. It's a beautiful, lovely, warm summer's evening, and I'm going to observe one of the most beautiful sights in the night sky. So there's still a little, little band of cloud, but I'm hoping this is all going to clear. It's the forecast is looking quite promising. Looking up into the overhead is still quite promising. So I've always been a big fan of the. Ooh, that's just gone over. So I've always been a big fan of observing the planets and easily the most beautiful planet is Saturn. The problem is, well, there's two problems with it. Firstly, it's still really quite low. So we're here up in England, Southern England, 51 degrees north, Saturn's still quite low in the sky. And that's still been quite a challenge. The second thing that I found that when I'm looking at Saturn, beautiful sight, ring system, moons, all that sort of thing. But there isn't anything there. So on Jupiter, you've got great red spot you've got shadow transits you've got all this dynamic detail in the jovian atmosphere mars you've got dust clouds you've got polar ice caps you've got surface features that slowly come and go and they even change the global dust storms that we've seen saturn has none of that just has this beautiful ring system and nothing else so here in the shed, just to keep it safe and out of the way for the time being, is the trusty C11. I've had this for a few years now. You see me photograph the moon, see me photograph Jupiter. Um, what I've done is because Saturn is so low from the observatory, it's still kind of hidden behind the trees. So I've relocated the C11 down here. What I'm going to do is wheel it out on my homemade trolley. So this is the trolley. It's literally just two bits of wood T-butted together. And I've literally put casters underneath each tripod leg. And then the tripod legs themselves all go into little divots. And then the tripod itself is held on with a ratchet strap so it doesn't bounce out. I should have used pneumatic wheels. These are quite hard, but as I only drag it a few metres out from the house, out from the garage, it doesn't really matter. I might really should paint it, but I only put it outside for a few hours every month. So having used it for years i've never even got around to painting it so this is the camera end of the telescope and as you can see i've put a crayford focuser on the back so i've got coarse focus the original focus and then i can use the motorized focuser to get that last fine detail so this is really useful for swapping out between eyepieces and cameras and then i use the fine focus the motorized focuser just to get the last fine detail so this is the camera end and as you can see I've got this large flip mirror and that's really useful because the field of view of the camera is often quite small particularly if you've got a barlow on the end of it so being able to put an eyepiece in and be able to see the planet line it up and then you lift the mirror out of the way and then that lets the light through to the camera so you can use that to line up and then switch to the camera mode I've put a times two barlow lens I've literally unthreaded that off my follow itself and I'm using this then as the body so that I don't have a ridiculously long magnification if I had the Barlow lens up here on the original body. I've got the atmospheric dispersion corrector filter and that corrects for red and blue and you'll see that when we go and set up and then you adjust those levers and that adjusts for the red and blue colour fringing in the atmosphere. So I've got the one shot colour camera so I don't have to worry about filters and capturing in different colours to put an image together. I can literally just take video and it's automatically recording in colour. So I really like that, very simple. And then on the front, just trying to through it, I've put the ultraviolet and infrared filter block that just gives you nice clean optical light it blocks off either end of the spectrum and gives a much cleaner image so i've threaded the adc the atmospheric dispersion corrector onto the body of the camera so body of the flip mirror and i've put the barlow lens that's been threaded onto the body of the flip mirror as well so that's shortened the optical path it actually makes it much more robust i'll put that back if I put that back in the focuser, so this is much more robust now, having everything threaded on together and also reduces that long length. So the only thing I haven't done is thread the camera to the atmospheric dispersion corrector, simply because I need to put the filter on the front and there's nowhere else for it to go. And it also means that I can adjust the angle and I can adjust the angle that the camera makes so that the image is the right way around. So I've just looked up and luckily that cloud band is now moving across the sky. So it does look quite clear. And I can now see Arcturus and Vega. So it looks like it's going to be a good night. I 
I always get so nervous at this point dragging the telescope out, but it's the only way to do it. You've got counterweights. Let me turn that round. Counterweights, I've got the mount, I've got the tripod, I've got the telescope, so this is the best way to do it. So it's properly dark now, dusk has finished. I guess the bats are still around, but I can't see them now, not against the, the dark sky. So Saturn's just started right above the trees. And the reason why I don't like setting up down the front is the road is just there, and there goes a the car. I've got street lights around as well. So I do sometimes get people wandering past, sometimes even the police who have stopped and had a look at Jupiter and the moon. So it's coming out to about midnight now and I've just noticed that not only has Saturn climbed a bit higher but also Jupiter's put a, put a show in as well. But oh, something got a bit chilly, I've put my top on as well. Um, I'm already going to get the telescope now and let's get cracking. And the first thing I've got to do is my polar alignment and for planetary imaging so long as Polaris is somewhere in the centre of the polar scope that's normally good enough. So I make myself my cup of tea while the telescope cools down, but also as Saturn climbs higher in the sky, the higher it gets, the more above all the atmospheric turbulence, all the stuff that's low down. So the nearer it is to the meridian, the better. Now I mentioned earlier that Saturn is quite a dull planet. It looks absolutely glorious, but there's nothing there. But if I compare the view of Saturn that we've got a few years ago, with how Saturn looks today, you can see straight away that the ring system, the angle the rings make has changed. And what's actually happening is the Earth is getting nearer and nearer and nearer to the orbital plane of Saturn's rings. And in 2025, so still a few years away, the rings of Saturn will actually appear edge on uh, as it does that. And you'll see that change over the next few years. So I've got Saturn in the eyepiece and what I'll do is I'll flip the flip mirror up and then we'll get it on the laptop screen. So the first thing to do is use the coarse focus to bring Saturn into view, get it centered on the screen and then use the motorized focuser to achieve the fine focus. And that's hands-free, vibration-free focus. I'm not touching the telescope. Oh, wow. Next thing is to adjust the atmospheric dispersion corrector and that corrects for the red-blue fringing that comes through the atmosphere. It's a bit of a tricky art, you adjust the levers and then bring that red and blue circle so that they overlap. That gets rid of the colour fringing. Which way do I turn the steering wheel? Yeah, I can't tell you how to do it. You just have to know. Yeah, but unfortunately I don't know. Yes, look at that. I've got the ADC aligned and it's, it's not the easiest, but pushing the levers equal and opposite or we'll get there. And having adjusted the ADC, I think I've got to check the focus again and I'll use the motorised focuser once again. I'm not using a focus mask, I'm just using my eye. I'm looking at the limb of the planet, I'm looking at the Saturn's rings. I'm just getting the sharpest image I can. 
Right, I'm now getting my exposure right ready for a video capture. I'm adjusting the gain and the exposure in the fire capture. And what I'm trying to do is achieve a re reasonably bright histogram, right about two thirds, three quarters. So the other thing to do is to set a region of interest and that just crops down the amount of frame that's been captured by the camera. And it just saves an awful lot of file space, improves the download speed, and means we're not wasting all that memory. And the problem is, and I didn't realise it at the time, is there's still quite a lot of that cirrus drifting around on the horizon. And no matter how much I adjust the settings, as that cirrus drifts through, it's obviously affecting the image. So I persevered, I did my best, I captured a whole load of data, and I'll try and process it as best I can. So it's about midnight now, it's just gone midnight. Saturn's actually on the meridian and it's been a, the most frustrating imaging session. There's lots of that cirrus stuff that we saw earlier. And what it means is that just as the you get the settings right, of course another bit of cirrus drifts in or drifts out. So Saturn's brightness is going up and down and up and down. It's so frustrating, you can't get the settings quite right. I've done my best and hopefully it has worked. So what we'll do then, I've done a few quick processes and then tomorrow we'll do a proper processing session. So I think I am going to pack up now. And the really great thing is I get the joy of carrying all the stuff back up to the observatory where I could have been set up anyway. So it's now the following morning, I'm feeling a little bit more human now. I'm processing my images of Saturn and no matter what I do, I just simply can't get the data to work. So what I do have is some old images I took when we had one of our last club trips out to Tenerife in 2018. At this point, Saturn was very high in the sky, so even though I had a smaller telescope, a six inch telescope, which was my travel telescope, I was actually getting better data because of that altitude Saturn was at, simply because it was above all that murk and turbulence low down on the horizon. So rather than process what I got last night, I will show you how I did my images, but this time with much higher quality data. So we'll use AutoStacker, that's a freeware piece of software. We'll open up our AVIs, our files. We'll then set the color to auto detect and I normally use 1000 and 2000 images to capture. I'll set the alignment points to 104 squares, but definitely use multi-scale, that's really useful. The drizzle, we definitely don't want any drizzle, so we set that to off and I've checked the noise robustness, put that in the normal range to five. And then hit stack. This is the point I normally go and make a cup of tea. This will take a while to process those videos, so we can come back later. We'll open up Registacks. This is the sharpening bit of freeware. This sharpens the image. Select your first one or select all of them as you go. You can already can see just by stacking a thousand of those sharpest frames, you've got a quite a nice image. It's not very sharp, so let's process that. First thing, RGB balance and auto balance gives it a nice natural color balance. Click the first slider, slide it all the way to the right, but use linked wavelengths. Use that box that says use linked wavelengths and then these are the numbers I normally use I put a bit of denoise in to get rid of that grainy uh, texture and then put a bit of sharpen in it as well and then because I didn't have an atmospheric dispersion corrector when we were in Tenerife this is the poor man's ADC this is the RGB align it's going to break the image down into reds and blues and then shuffle them around so that they're nicely aligned and that is how you process an image of Saturn. As always, don't forget to subscribe, and I look forward to bringing you more videos as we explore the night sky. We've got counterweights, we've got the mount, we've got the telescope itself. It really is the only practical way to do it. Stop, Frank, I that means I can screw the filter into, start again. Start this bit again for the 97th time. 